Welcome back to Seek Strength and welcome back to Seekistan. We're here with the latest developments in the Labour King saga. You know, uh, we couldn't let it go for an extra video. Just for a second video, we couldn't we let it go. We actually couldn't. We couldn't let it go. We were going to leave it go. I wanted to talk about this particular subject this again, but it just so happens that Labour King released an apology video. So it gives me an opportunity to talk about one of the things that came up. A couple of different things actually that came up but so first of all liver king on his youtube released a six ish minute apology video it's a complete it's a script might writing masterpiece primals i'm making this video to apologize because i it's it's certainly not an apology it's it's like an apology i'm sorry but that's the mm. kind of way i describe it in six minutes so go watch it just give reference for it uh, six and a half minutes or whatever go watch the video it's gotten it had like 600,000 views in less than 10 hours or something so it's obviously gone pretty viral it's doing what he wants it to do I realise yeah. a slight bit of the irony where we making these videos is continuing this crusade that he is doing I understand that but no less we also get views from it so I mean where does it stop where yeah. does the where does the back padding stop there? there is a, there's some interesting things as well in that recovery in that recovery video in that uh, apology video you know mm -hmm. Like the first and the most we we talked on this about the first in the first video we made about this, is that it's the. I lied to you because I know better than you, it's the I can make this decision for you, so he, he's basically saying I know that you need to do the ten on ancestral tenants or whatever nine Dara nine ancestral Jesus Christ ten as the ten commandments isn't it well the tent so, the tent is take care of yes. <laughs> so I know that these nine things are so important for you, you don't understand how important they are, so then I can lie about the other things that go on in my life, you know? And it's it's classic dickhead salesman mm -hmm. uh, thing where, like, someone's going in to buy a car and they're asking about the uh, the miles per gallon in the car and be like, oh, sure, she's never going to figure that out. Just tell her it's 45 miles per gallon. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I understand better than you, so I'm able to lie to you and it doesn't matter. And that's basically what he says in the apology video. You know, he says he understands how important these things are. And so he made the decision to not tell anyone because he thought that if people knew about the drug use, they wouldn't listen to the nine commandments or tenants as much. It's kind of a savior kind of complex mm. where you are the small white lie, you know, to two wrongs make a right or the whatever. The greater good. The greater good. The greater good. <laughs> Um, so that, that kind of that lying to you for your own sake to save you are those kind of small white lies so where you uh, you know it's for your own benefit essentially the road to hell was paved with good intentions in that regard so he's like lying to us because you wouldn't understand that like that people's yeah. feeble brain couldn't comprehend that he would take steroids but his message would be fine which is a thing we said in the last video and said yeah. in other videos like we really like some of the stuff he talks about but that is moving on to a little bit in that video though which i think is really not okay and i think it this is a real piece of shit move and you might say oh that's surely the lying about gear and selling supplements and saying the supplements will you look like him was a piece of shit move but the thing he said in the video where is it follows on from that i'm lying to you to save you we talk about eighty thousand people attempt suicide every day using that as a tactic to somehow sell the thing he was doing to make it okay that it was the two wrongs do make a right which i think is a complete shitbag move that's a terrible thing to be using to insert into your video as a way of allowing your lie to be uh, justified you know that's such a that's such a, a horrendous thing to do to be playing on people's emotions like that to be playing on things that are obviously incredibly traumatic you know it's one of the you know people attempting suicide is clearly something that's super egregious and it's very traumatic for them as individuals but it's also something that's incredibly personal to them and requires a huge amount of help and is incredibly unfortunate. And it's just tragic when that happens. And to be using that as something that is as a marketing tactic for your thing is, in my opinion, far more egregious than saying, oh, you know, selling supplements and not telling people you're on gear. I think that that kind of thing there in itself, of all the things he's done so far, is, is probably one of the most heinous things in relation to that, you know. And it's not often we will grab the pitchfork, like I said in the last video, someone commented saying, oh, it sounds like you're giving a pass. And we normally like to keep things kind of rational, but that particular thing is, is pretty uh, yucky. No, that's the biggest dickhead move ever. Like, because you're, 
that's something with real consequences, you know, like to a certain extent, people looking better if they take a supplement isn't a massive consequence. You waste some money on a supplement is not some massive consequence. You being in dire mental health and a dire mental health state, like you being in a very, very bad way, and then you eating some raw liver and doing the seven other uh, ancestral tenants as if that's going to make a bit of difference you know now there are people who might be languishing or they might be experiencing symptoms of poor mental health and they might try some of this intervention stuff and certainly they might have some positive affect because of this different intervention they might try they might try cold water exposure right which is in a fair amount of recent uh, literature seen to increase resilience and improve people's mental health right but by no means is this a path to success for somebody who is actually mentally ill you know or has poor mental health currently so this is by far the most dangerous aspect of it mm -hmm. like you're not going to change anything by telling people they don't need to wear clothes and they need to walk around barefoot uh and that's like the big one for me is, is that this is the the biggest thing out of the whole thing as if you whatever about lying to people whatever about selling them stuff that may or may not work whatever about being in great shape and telling nobody you were taking gear this kind of gaslighting of saying like no no i'm helping you because people who are mentally ill need to be helped by this and this is the best way of getting the message out there mm -hmm. uh the next thing for me was definitely the i took drugs but i only took a tiny bit of drugs and yeah. i only took them for a little bit mm -hmm. he also he put the date in there of midway through 2021 i needed some help with my hormones mm -hmm. as if he alludes to the fact that he wouldn't have been using uh winstrol and and uh what was the other deca deca prior to that you know like we saw those progress videos in 2021 he was in as good a shape or maybe better shape back then than he was in now right so this kind of illusion of like it's just the same thing it's following on that same lie of like oh i just needed some help then midway through 2021 he says he's been training for a million years or something mental like that since he was four mm -hmm. and he's like oh i never took drugs but i took a tiny bit back then but i don't take it now on the subject of kind of using certain tactics to to light people as part of the masquerade i think another thing that is is pretty pretty heinous as well as the the use of his children when he's mm. enacting his kind of charlatan things you know there's a lot of youtubers and there's a lot of lifestyle influencers who use their kids uh, growing up for cute videos and stuff like that and they in themselves there's certainly arguments that that's not very cool that's not great to be doing for a lot of kids They're exposing them to social media that earlier exposed to that kind of dynamic and that falsehood but in theirs is theirs quite innocent because they are the show and they're the product in that sense i would disagree with those for a whole other reason but when you use your kids like this as part of that marketing tool you know as part of that kind of complete picture you know you could be this person you could be this man with this um with his wife and your your strong healthy sons and doing all these things together you know as part of this package that he's selling you from the thing I think that's quite egregious. I, I know some might say, look, I wouldn't be that mad if my dad had 100 million or whatever, you know, and, and maybe you would, but you've no idea the impact it has on you as a teenager. It's certainly going to impact their lives because people are aware of them. I can only imagine what their personal relationships are like at the moment with their friends. Of course, their friends know about this. Of course, their friends, assuming they have an opportunity to have friends in school, they might not be going to school. They not might be in an environment where they have a relationship with people, which I hope isn't the case. But in that regard, I think that's particularly... Uh, yucky as well yeah, yeah it's really yeah. like ugh. it's icky that's that along with this the suicide statistic thing are are up there with some of the worst tactics i think in regards to being a salesman that this is yeah 100 percent. uh just to touch once more like the another kind of falsehood he put out there was around the blood work uh and the blood work thing really irks me because look everyone knows if you're taking exogenous hormones and it, it's well known now that you can take them quite responsibly. A lot of people take them responsibly. They monitor their health as they're taking them, which is something he kind of harps on about all the time. I was taking it to replace my natural levels, which he wasn't. You don't take bodybuilding drugs to replace your natural levels. Hey, I take a lot of decades to replace my natural levels. <laughs> so don't, don't bring me down. So the you're saying, oh, I replace... But, but the rhetoric for the last year on every social media platform, on all of the different 
podcasts and shows he went on was that he doesn't get bloods. You don't need bloods. When you mm. feel great, when you feel as great as I am, you don't get bloods. And then the second thing was his bloods were tripe. Mm. His bloods were a disaster, you know? So, like, you're, you're lying to people. Firstly, saying you don't need to monitor your health. And then the second thing you're doing is you're lying to them, telling them you don't need to monitor your health while your own health is in an absolute shitstorm because of the gear you're taking and possibly because of the lifestyle you're you're getting people to live. Like, it's possible that that diet protocol, along with that lifestyle protocol, along with all the overtraining that he self-admits to, is the reason his health is so poor. So he's it's once again being like this thing of, oh, I'm monitoring my health. It would be great if you told everyone that two years ago, uh, but clearly he wasn't. So the thing that I really wanted to talk about again, and I was thinking about it for the last few days, and I was trying to imagine the scenarios, was the bodybuilding coach who I think we all know who that is and I think a lot of people have uh, not confirmed it but have you know aligned with that idea and I think a lot of people would have come to the consensus of who that coach was uh, we'll know by naming it again I'm sure you can find it out but from that coach's point of view I was trying to think if I was that coach in what scenario could I oust a client like that you know and obviously we're coaches ourselves not for you know performance enhancing drugs we don't coach uh, people who are millionaire influencers who have all their thing riding on it but at no point could I imagine a scenario where I would give someone's personal details like that given their blood work given their pictures and their videos without their permission or giving their uh, you know their sign up stuff that stuff is very personal there's an understanding yeah people are like okay it's not under any kind of um, HIPAA oath or HIPAA kind of uh, laws are like that uh, in Europe it actually probably would be done for some kind of uh, confidentiality sharing which was a lot of in the recent years but yeah it might not be underneath those but as a coach it's still understood that when someone sends you this stuff it's a conversation a private conversation between the two of you it's not on a, a, a public forum it's private messages and emails one-to-one -one conversation you when you're looking at this from the public point of view and I totally understand why people are saying this that they're saying this was kind of a, a whistleblower kind of scenario and it's a scenario where this was for the greater good greater good the greater good this, the greater greater good. Good. this is a scenario where they're releasing this information for the benefit of people and he kind of deserved this but as a coach your obligation is to your clients uh, not only from a business point of view so if people find out you release people's information like this it's obviously a terrible business decision and very few people will come to you after as it's not it's not good practice but as a kind of first and foremost just as a kind of an, an ethical point of view from a coach or from a an understanding the agreement is when someone contacts you like this even if they're a massive dickhead even if they say terrible things about you even if they credit someone else and you help them massively in their success if for any reason i can't imagine a scenario where you would release information like this specifically the blood work and stuff like for example derek got an inquiry email now a lot of people are like oh derek didn't have any kind of obligation like that but even in that scenario i couldn't see us releasing that kind of email if if we had an email like that from liver king i don't see a scenario where we would have released that it's just a certain agreement there's this trust that when you begin the process it has to start from the client side and when they initiate it and that stuff is brought in from their side that you are being someone who is going to be confidential, who's going to be a professional at least, not professional at least, who's going to be a professional coach, you're going to be an adult about these decisions, and you're not going to be releasing people's information. And I just can't get away from that fact. Now, still, ultimately, I get where people are coming from, though. A lot of people are saying, good, it's, it's good that he's been released or, or kind of exposed, and I totally understand that point of view. But just looking at it from the profession we're in, at that point of view, it's hard not to take that opinion. And I think we've seen that from other, uh, other kind of, people who are in our position on online as well yeah it's definitely a a major faux pas mm. now you'll probably tell everybody in the industry that you meet at a certain competition you'll be like you never guess who's on here yeah yeah, yeah. but it's a, it's a major faux pas mm. uh but yeah i hope now this kind of just like in my head this will just fizzle off into the ether liver king will still be a massive influencer he'll still be massive on social media Companies will still do really well. I think he'll get a lot more hate and a lot more flack. But I think people will take what he says with a bit more of a grain of salt. Um, but 
I, I don't think this is by any means going to sink him or anything like that. He's SDN or the liver king. So the I think what would be interesting to see is if he downsizes in terms of his appearance. Will he stop taking former answering drugs? Will he just resort to just the TRT? Will what will happen in that regard? I, it would be so interesting. I think the real way he could actually try and save some face now, if he wanted an honest way of saving face, is to stop taking things, return to TRT, stop taking 15 whatever 15,000 blood hormone or stop taking everything you know and show people what happens while you're living with the nine ancestral tenants and uh, kind of go from there and show people what it's like when you actually train that much but when you do the things he was espousing I think that's a good way of actually uh, defending what he was showing that would be very interesting I think we're going to see something different I think we're going to see this as another marketing ploy I think we're going to see maybe some blood work getting released that he'll show now he'll have improvements in certain values I don't think we'll see a downsizing in terms of his physique hmm. if anything I, I think he'll be just as egregious as ever with the, the drug use and the, the kind of physique he walks around with but I think you'll you'll hear this rhetoric a lot of I got away because you'll hear him talking about like in the apology videos talking about those dirty drugs mm-hmm. and that it was just the Winstrol and the Deca that had his blood values all over the place mm-hmm. and I think you're going to see that then now these are the issue, you know, he was under pressure to do this, he tried this, it ruined his health, not anything else he did, or the last 20 years of drug use, and now this will be a, a point of focus, you know. Mm. I don't think he'll, I don't think he'll downsize in any fashion, I, I no. couldn't imagine, not from a, not just from a public point of view, not from a kind of, for his kind of saving face, you know, the embarrassment, but I don't think, given what we've seen of him, I don't think his ego would allow that, I don't think. We talk about this a lot uh, when we talk about PEDs and training athletes from PEDs is that the psychology of athletes, and Darius talked about this quite a bit, you know, in terms of like how it changes and, and kind of inflates certain parts of your personality and then they exacerbate it. And I know people like Mike Gizertail has talked about this before, is that it's, it certainly exacerbates certain parts of your personality. And I don't think, even given his current state, if he's taking such a large amount of performance sensing drugs, that he would be able to make that decision where he could just come off everything and see himself downsize in the mirror, see himself reduce massively, see his performance decrease, see the comments on social media. There's a lot to that. I don't think, I just couldn't see that happening. I just couldn't see, mm. given what we've seen of this person, he's clearly a, a some kind of sociopath or psychopath <laughs> or something. I don't think you could see him make that decision and just comfortably do it, you know? Yeah, it's uh, to a certain extent as well, and this sounds quite sad to say this, but for a lot of people who are professional athletes, or in his case, he's some sort of full-time athlete, right? He's not an athlete, but he's an influencer, and his physique dictates his influence on social media. Those people are drug addicts to a massive extent, you know? Like, they, it's not a simple thing of, like, that it's just they don't enjoy being that big, or if they were to get smaller, they wouldn't enjoy being weaker, or they wouldn't enjoy being whatever, to a certain extent, the drugs are the addiction, you know, and, and you'll see it. You'll see it in the email threads that came out in that video. He just goes for more and more and more. He's taking a plethora of peptides to induce increase in growth hormone, and he's taking an ungodly amount of growth hormone. What's his solution? His physician said double the growth hormone. Should he go from 10,000 to 15,000 per month on growth hormone? You know, like, that's not a... That's not a sensible business move. And I, I know he's very, very rich prior to, to this stuff. And he's even richer now. That's It's not like he made a sensible business move and said, I'm going to increase investment to increase outcomes from this. Like he'd still be in great shape if he had a little less back fat, which mm. the back fat was killing him. You know, it was killing his physique. Uh, that's that's, that's a, a step into to poor mental health there, you know, and, and it's, Certainly something he should be looking at if he wants to have a positive outcome from this and kind of look at nobody saying anyone has to get off drugs, you know, like it, that's your own choice or anything like that. But it, it's probably not as simple as like, oh, why doesn't he just stop taking drugs? You know, like it's, it's very, very likely he's in the same position as many, many professionals or people who make their living off their physique is that they're just addicted to the drugs. Also, it on the health side of things, mm-hmm. just before we finish up. No doctor is going to take somebody who's five foot six or five foot seven at two hundred pounds, no matter how lean they are, mm-hmm. when they're purple, mm-hmm. and say you're healthy. Yeah, 
and no no responsible doctor is going to then prescribe winstrol and a plethora of other things so they maintain all of that mass while having such low body fat percentages like it's not that's not healthy you know like that's not your heart is under a hell of a lot of pressure there i'll tell you what's not healthy is he was encouraging people not to shower what yeah he doesn't shower but he still shaves his chest so clearly he showers that's the biggest and he goes for a swim in the lake like that's the dirtiest secret here is he obviously shaves and goes for I think a he does sunbeds too no thanks guys thank you